Now, another thing that's inside uh, your reference handbook is this figure here on the Venturi meter. Okay, it's inserted into a pipeline and you can measure the flow. You measure the flow by looking at the difference in pressure between P1 at impulse line 1 and P2 at impulse line 2. You see our various cross-sectional areas and at the throat of this Venturi, A sub 2, you have a decrease in area which is going to be an increase in velocity, right? So notice the pressure gauges. Notice that the pressure at P1 is greater than the pressure at P2. Now this is an interesting concept here. And of course we look at, if we take a look at the equation, we've got P1 here, right, is greater than P2. And we're looking at our Z's, of course, and we're looking at our areas to come up with what is the flow rate. We also see at the bottom of the page, we see what's on page 16 of your reference handbook, which is some examples of some orifices, right, and their nominal coefficients. So we see that the C sub V value that's in the equation for the Venturi meeting, meter is listed out here in the bottom row, C sub V or coefficient of velocity. The one above it is used sometimes in some of the equations, C sub C, coefficient of contraction, and the product of those two, depending on what your typical orifice is, product is C, or just the coefficient. Okay, but for Venturi's, we're using coefficient of velocity. Now, as we decrease the diameter and decrease the area here, okay, decreasing area, remember from the continuity equation, area goes down, velocity is going to go up. If velocity increases like it does, then V squared over 2G increases, and from a what is the energy at this particular point in the system, you've got a certain total amount of energy, and your Z is the same, we're dealing with our pressure, and we're dealing with our V squared over 2G. will equal our total energy. So if our velocity head goes up because of the decrease in area, our pressure has to go down, pressure head. That's why this P2 is a lower pressure right here. Okay, so keep that concept in mind as you're going to answer some workshop problems coming up and some concept problems. Last item in this pressure flow hydraulics section is orifice meter. It's on page 32. Okay, so we've seen on the bottom of page 31 what are some of the typical orifices, and we also see that this equation is interested in, of course, what is your capital C which is that coefficient that's listed out in the top row. So we're measuring our flow as it's going through this orifice plate. Of course, if we looked at it in section view, it would be a circular channel, and the orifice is an opening like that, directing the flow right through the center. And you can see the streamlines, etc., including turbulence on the other side of the orifice. All right, so we see that there's differences in pressure. The Z component, square root of 2G, right? H is going to be velocity times area of the orifice opening times a coefficient, depending on the type of orifice you have, like they're listed out on the bottom of page 31, right? Sharp edge, rounded, short tube, or bored up. So you'd have all the components to answer a question in the PE exam. Okay, any questions on anything that we have talked about at this point in time? We're about 35 minutes past the hour.